Before walking through the schematic in detail, let's recap the benefits of the active ferrite antenna with integrated Q multiplier and external loading the coil. How things have been constructed over the last several years. To get you to this point, their minor league system to come up and make an immediate The of in 15 dB again, the Q multiplier, the loading coil, and a stationary mount if uh, directivity is not important. You can download a copy of the schematic in the BOM. Just go to my video description itself for a link to the uh, Google Drive. You'll see J1 is configured as an amplifier itself. And again, I've uh, designed this to keep the gain less than 15 dB to uh, reduce any oscillations. So there's no bypass cap that you would typically find in parallel with R3. A different uh, JFET other than the MPF102 may require, you know, a capacitor place there. Something around uh, 0 0.01 or 0 0.1 microfarads should uh, work well. Again, you can see we're actually applying the signal to the uh, gate of J1 and L1 is nothing more than the ferrite rod that I chose to use, the Type 61, half inch in diameter, seven and a half inches in length. And you can see the inductance in my case is approximately 180 microhenries and that was done just to be able to get the Varactor D1 the NTE618 to be able to tune across the entire AM band by varying R4. Um, one thing you also notice R2, the uh, value of that was chose to be 3 meg, that actually improves the Q. And you may say, how's that possible when you have a big voltage loss again with the Varactor being reverse biased? Uh, there's no current there to uh, create a reduction in the voltage. So um, it works uh, well and actually improves the uh, Q. You'll notice that pickup coil, L2, is wound on the ground side of L1. That's important. And it needs to be in the same direction as L1, otherwise the Q multiplier circuit will not work. J2 just serves as a buffer amplifier. So you can see the configuration there is nothing more than a source follower. And it feeds that loading coil, which is the uh, loop stick antenna coil. I think anything from uh, 470 to 680, which is uh, common for a, a loop stick, will work well. I'm using a, a 470 in my design. And I can actually move that within uh, five to six inches on the transistor radio, and within two or three inches of a uh, loop antenna on an All American 5. And I get that to work. Again, I'm feeding that with some uh, miniature coax from uh, about 30 to 40 feet away at this case. The advantage of the uh, loading coil is a, a remote location for the uh, antenna being outside up in the attic. In my case, I've just got it on a tripod in the garage for now. And you can see J3 is configured for the Q multiplier. That's the same design that we used before. So it's just a copycat from the uh, previous uh, design that was shared by another author. And R10 allows me to adjust the amount of feedback up to the point of oscillation. Again, as you reduce the bandwidth, you'll hear the bassy tones up to the point of oscillation. So there's kind of a fine line there on the adjustment of R10 in addition to adjusting R4. You can see the pickup coil here side-by-side -side picture. I just mounted it in a small enclosure with the coax. And to the left you can see the uh, controller itself that uh, controls the Q multiplier and the tuning of the receiver in a momentary um, single pole, excuse me, double pole, double throw switch 
for uh, controlling the uh, rotor itself using a uh, battery, 9 volt battery, inside the uh, case itself. So I hope you guys enjoy building this if you choose to do so. Should you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, reach out in the comments. You guys uh, take care. Thanks again for watching.